had a wonderful season. Um, the adult class did a great study that we just finished up, and we'll be looking forward to another great study in the fall. Uh, Bible study is finished for the season. We'll be taking it up again in the fall. On Thursday, June 20th, mm. yes, Tony, mm, that's the strawberry <laughs> social. We're all looking forward to it just the same way Tony is. Are there any other announcements we may have missed? Seeing none, let's praise the Lord. Good morning. Our call to worship this morning from Proverbs 1. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let's look to our sentences this morning from Psalm 20. The Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices, Selah. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from the soul of heaven. In the mighty victory for I am the right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we will rise and stand upright. Give victory to the name of the Lord. From Mark chapter 4. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Please stand if you're able for our opening hymn number 279, Faith of Our Fathers.
sometimes I think we've got that backwards. Sometimes I think that it's the faith that is true to us and that stays with us to the end. Let's look to our responsive reading from 2 Corinthians 5. Because so we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil.
for Pastor Heather, who recently lost her husband in a very devastating situation. For all of those with unspoken needs, and for the world unrest, for our military, and for our first responders. So, anyone else? Yes, Jim. Uh, my girlfriend and her husband's cancer has returned. Okay, what, give me a name. Ed. Ed. Cancer is back. Um, I went to have a joy on a friend. Um, joy for my son Michael successfully graduated from the junior apprenticeship training um, community in the local IBEW electrical union as a grand soul journeyman. So I would like to pray that he continues to remain safe from family and electricity. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sorry. She's now gaining the weight the doctor wants. She's gaining the weight the doctor wants. Outstanding. <laughs> Very good. Mark? Continue prayers for Eric. He's out of ICU, but he uh, hasn't passed the swallow test to be able to be a doctor. He's improving everything. Okay. So, Eric, after his tragic situation, is recovering, but recovering slowly, so we'll keep praying for him. It's a difficult time to go through, but we don't go through it alone. Right, let's pray. Father, we do thank you that we can come to you with our needs, with our concerns, with our gratitude and our thanks, and that you hear it all. You already know it all. You already know everything that we have need of before we ask. You already know everything that concerns us before we find words for it. We thank you that you know us that well. And we thank you that you want to hear from us, that you invite us to come to you. And here we are. Lord, we pray for Jim, that you would touch him, 
that you would minister to him, and for Brittany, that you would minister to her, and for Ed, and for Bill, all of those who are battling cancer, Lord, we pray that you would touch them. We pray, Father, that you would strengthen their bodies. We pray that you would weaken the disease. We pray, Lord, that you would give them health and peace, and that they would know, Lord, that you are with them. Father, for Mike and Kathy, for Joe and Donna, for all of those who are dealing with confusion and with dementia, we pray, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would surround them with your peace, that you would steep them in your peace like a tea bag in a teapot. We pray, Lord, that they would know that they are in the right place, that they are in your hands, and that they can be content where they are. And Lord, for those who are giving care, we pray that you would strengthen them and encourage them. Father, we pray for Doug and for Johnny, that you would minister to them, that they would know that you are with them. Father, we pray for Miss Millie and for Judy, that you would touch them and bless them. We pray, Lord, for Maggie, that you would hold her close to you, surround her with your peace, your love. Lord, for Mariah and for Bob and for Eric, we pray that the recovery that has begun would continue. We pray, Lord, that you would bring about the healing and the complete recovery that is needed. Lord, we pray that you touch Georgia minister to her right now, and Zoe. Father, we thank you for Michael graduating. We pray, Lord, that you would watch over him and keep him safe as he starts the work that he's doing. Lord, we pray for Emily and her family, for Martha Bowman and her family, for all of those who right now are missing someone. And I know on this day in particular, a lot of us are missing people. We pray, Lord, that you would be with each one, that your peace that passes all understanding would be with each one. We thank you, Lord, that summer is gaining. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to grow and to develop. We pray, Lord, that you would grow to be the person that you've created her to be, to know and love you. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for the healing that you're doing in Carolyn. We pray that you would continue to help her to improve and to gain ground. We pray, Lord, for Pastor Kent, that you would continue to work in his life and his situation and bring healing there. And Lord, for Heather, that you would be with her. Encourage her. Hold her close, Lord. This would be one of those times that she would know that you are carrying her. <coughs> Father, we pray for this Jane's son's mother-in-law. You know her. You know her husband. You know their situation. We pray, Lord, that you would surround them with your peace. That they would know that your presence is with them, that they would be able to tell that you are right there every step of the way. Father, perfect love casts out fear. We pray that your perfect love would be with them. Father, we thank you for all of those who are serving, whether in the military or on the mission field or here at home. We pray that you would watch over them, strengthen them for the work they do, and keep them safe, and bring them home safely. Father, for those who are in places of unrest around the world, you would help them to find peace in their hearts, even if there's none to be found in the world around them. We pray, Lord, that you would bring a just and lasting peace in those places. Watch over and protect the innocent. Lord, for those who have unspoken needs on their hearts, for those who have concerns that they're dealing with, for those who have things that they're afraid of, for those who have things that they're grappling with, addiction or depression or anxiety, you know it. 
We pray, Lord, that you would be the light that shines in the darkness, that you would be the solid rock that they can stand on. Lord, that they would know that they're in your hands. Father, we thank you for the work that you're doing in all of our lives. We thank you for the things that you've already done and that we have seen that encourage us and help us to believe that you're going to continue to do it. We pray, Lord, that you would bring this work to completion in us. That we would be able to look back and say, look what my God did. Help us to fulfill the roles that you call us to, the callings that you give us. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to serve you with our whole heart, with everything that we have, to the best of our ability. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray as Jesus talks. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you're able for hymn number 58, This Is My Father's World.
be shared with the world in Jesus' name. So what would Father's Day be without a dad joke? So, a couple little boys are getting into trouble at school. Mom decides the thing to do is to send them to go see the minister, and maybe he can straighten them out, because they won't listen to anybody else. So the oldest one is sent to the minister's office. He walks in, he sits down in the chair, and the minister looks across the desk at him and he says, where is God? And the boy's eyes get a little big, but he doesn't say anything. And the minister thinks he's not taking me seriously. So he gets up and he walks around in front of the desk and he leans on the desk and he crosses his arms and he says, Where is God? And the little boy sinks down into his seat a little bit more, but he's still not saying anything. And the minister thinks, I've really got to get through to this kid. So he walks over and he puts his hands on the arms of the chair and he leans down and he says, Where is God? And the little boy bolts out from under his arm, runs out of the office, tears out of the church, runs all the way home, runs up the stairs to his bedroom, slams the door, puts his back against the door, looks at his little brother and says, Man, we're in so much trouble this time. God's missing and they think we did it. <laughs> matter is. <laughs> Maybe if uh, he had communicated a little better, the little guy might have gotten the idea of what he was trying to ask. Where is God? Well, it depends. Where are we? Because he is wherever we are. Because he is with us. School year just about over. Summer is just about starting. And God, who has been with you all year in school, will be with you all summer while you're doing all of the other things that you're going to be doing. The next fall, when school starts again, uh, don't even want to think about that yet. <laughs> He'll be with you there too. And I'll tell you what, when you get to that day, and it's going to come, when you get to that day that I reached once, when June rolled around, and I realized nothing changes. My job doesn't shut down for the summer. I have to keep going year round. Man, that was a hard day. But when you get to that day, he's still with you there too. Okay? Our scripture this morning is from Ezekiel 17. So I'm going to make reference to Daniel as well, one at a time. <coughs> Ezekiel 17, 22 to 24. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will take a shoot from the very top of the cedar and plant it. I will break off a tender sprig from within its topmost shoots and plant it in a high and lofty mountain. And on the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it, and it will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it. They will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. Now, I'm not going to read Daniel 4 in its entirety, but I'm going to tell you the story. Let's pray. Father, as we turn now from your word, which is divine and inspired, to the words that I believe you've given me, I pray that everything that is said would be from you, and that what is from you would be sealed in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> well, Daniel and Ezekiel were within a hundred years of each other, pretty close in time. 
In fact, it may be that uh, the things that took place in the book of Daniel took place before Ezekiel wrote, but that they were written down by Daniel after Ezekiel wrote. In any event, here's what we know. Daniel chapter 4. Now, Daniel had a history of interpreting dreams for Nebuchadnezzar. You probably remember that Daniel's initial exposure to Nebuchadnezzar, so to speak, was because Nebuchadnezzar had a dream about a great statue. The head was gold, the arms were silver, the belly was of bronze, the legs were of iron, and the feet were iron mixed with clay, and then a rock came in and smashed the whole thing, and the rock grew to be a mountain that filled the whole world. That was Nebuchadnezzar's first dream, and he could not for the life of him figure out what it meant. So he called all of his wise men and he asked them, but he decided if they were really, truly wise men, they would be able to tell him what the dream was, as well as what the interpretation was. So he wouldn't tell them what he dreamed. If he had, they could have made up some mumbo jumbo and probably preserved themselves, but they had no idea what the dream was, so they didn't know what to say to him. And so he was going to have them all executed because they claimed to be wise men, but clearly they weren't very wise. And then Daniel got word of this. Daniel was in the unenviable position of being considered one of the wise men, which means he was under the blade too. And he called and said, give me a chance to pray and see if God will give us an answer. And God did. And the answer was that the head of gold was Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. And the arms and chest of silver was the kingdom that would follow him, the Medes and Persians, which would be nice but not as rich as his. And the kingdom that would follow that would be the brass, that would be the Greek Empire, and then following that, the legs of iron would be the Roman Empire, and at the end of the Roman Empire would come the Rock of Ages, Jesus Christ, who would destroy everything that had come before, and then grow to be the mountain that filled the whole world. And there is pretty much nowhere that you can go where the gospel has not been preached. So that has happened. Daniel saw all of this and he was able to tell this to Nebuchadnezzar. And I think once he told Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold is you, that was pretty much it. Nebuchadnezzar was sold from that point on. That appealed to him. Nebuchadnezzar was a guy who was uh, very much impressed with himself. He had conquered as much as there was to conquer and he was very happy with that. He thought he was the greatest thing on earth. And in some ways, maybe he was, but not always. There was one who was above him, and he didn't see that. He didn't recognize him. So Nebuchadnezzar got another dream. And it was a dream of a great tree that stood above all the others and its branches stretched out in all directions, and the birds and the animals all lived in the shelter of this tree, and it produced fruit for everyone. Basically, this tree was, it was the source of provision and protection for a lot of life. And then a messenger from heaven said, chop down that tree. And so it was. And the messenger from heaven said, let seven years pass over him after he has been given the mind of a beast. And at the end of the seven years, we'll see what happens. When Nebuchadnezzar told this dream to Daniel, Daniel's response was, I wish that this dream applied to the king's enemies instead of to the king. You have gotten, and I'm paraphrasing here, this is not a direct quote from the book of Daniel, you have gotten too big for your bridges. 
You have forgotten that there is a God in heaven who is even greater than the mighty Nebuchadnezzar. And because of that, God is going to humble you. But maybe there's still a chance to avoid this if you repent of your pride and if you acknowledge God in heaven. Maybe you can still avoid this. Well, Nebuchadnezzar might have taken the warning seriously for a while. I mean, after all, Daniel obviously knew what he was talking about. He had gotten the last dream right. But the heart of man is desperately wicked, and who can know it? A month went by, and then a couple of months, and then finally, 12 months later, Nebuchadnezzar is standing, looking out over the city of Babylon, and his heart is just overflowing with his pride. And he says, isn't this that great Babylon that I have built with my mighty power for the, for the glory of my majesty? <clears throat> and the frog in my throat. For the glory of my majesty. And he had no sooner finished speaking when a voice from heaven said, Nebuchadnezzar, now you're going to know that there is a God who is above you. And from that moment, Nebuchadnezzar, the great tree that everyone depended on, the great tree that sheltered and provided for everybody, was cut down. This king, who ruled over all with an iron fist, became, in his mind, no better than an ox. They had to drive him out of the castle. They had to drive him out of the city. For the next seven years, he lived in the fields and in the countryside. He ate grass like an animal. His hair and his nails grew out and were matted. If there was any trace of humanity left, much less glory or majesty or splendor, you had to look awfully hard to find it. For seven years. To put that into perspective, when was the first time you guys met me? I've been here about seven years. Which means if the first time that I walked into this building was when Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind, we would be just about due for the point where he would come to the end of that period. So, after seven years have passed, Nebuchadnezzar lifted up his eyes and looked to heaven, and he knew himself. He knew who he was, and he knew what he had done. And he gave glory to God. All right, I'm not gonna read the entire chapter, but I do have to go back and get just a piece of this. The end of that time, this is chapter 4, Daniel, verse, verse 34. You can read the words, I can't read the verse numbers, you can understand. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, and my sanity was restored. And then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified Him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the people of the earth are regarded as nothing. 
He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? At the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor and splendor were returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. My advisors and nobles sought me out and I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of Heaven, because everything he does is right and all his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Nebuchadnezzar was the great tree. He was the provider and the protector for a lot of kingdoms. And yet, when he did not acknowledge God, he found out exactly how far he could fall. It's Father's Day. Men, we are called to be protectors and providers. We are called to give guidance. We are called to stand like a tree and take care of those around us, to be a shelter for them. That doesn't exclusively attach to fathers. Really, it extends to all of us. Because all of us have the ability to be there for someone. All of us have the ability to be that shelter, that shade, that, pro that provider, what is needed in the moment for someone. We all of us have that within us. And what determines whether or not we are able to do it is whether or not we acknowledge the God who is above us. Now the passage in Ezekiel 17, he says that God is going to take a shoot and God is going to plant it and it is going to grow and it is going to become great and it is going to do all of the things that Nebuchadnezzar did. He points out that God is able to make grow the tree that he wants to make grow, even if it appears to be dried up and dead. And that he is able to cut down any tree that he wants, no matter how well it appears to be doing. Ezekiel is prophesying about the coming of Christ. Because Jesus is that tree that grows and that provides for all of us. He is the tree that we can all cling to in the storms of life. He is the tree we can hold on to and be safe. He is the one who bears the fruit that we need. Through the Holy Spirit, that fruit is born in our lives. Joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering. He is the one who gives us the shade we need. He is the one who watches over us. And he does it perfectly because he is the God above us. But we are Christians little Christs called to follow in his footsteps to the best of our ability. Which means it is our task to be the best tree that we can, to provide the best fruit that we can, to provide the shelter that is needed by those around us. To be a safe place for them. We're called to be that tree albeit on a smaller scale. 
But we can learn from Nebuchadnezzar's mistake. Nebuchadnezzar was that tree on a grand scale, but when he fell, he fell a long way. We can learn from his mistake instead of having to repeat it ourselves. We can remember that there is a God above us. We can give him the glory and the praise that is due to him and not exalt ourselves not worry about the glory of my majesty. Because I'll tell you right now, the glory is his. The majesty is his. Everything in us that is good is from him. Without him, we would be no different than the ox out there in the field eating grass. Without him, we're no better than Nebuchadnezzar during those seven years when he did not even know who he was. So acknowledge the God above you and be the best tree that you can because no tree can flourish without the light of the sun. Amen. Number 560, For the Beauty of the Earth.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance before you and give you peace.